Good day, grade 11s, and welcome to the last module in term 2, and that is module 7.1, where we are now quickly going to look at finding information. Now, for the IB learners, um, not really going to touch base on much of this for this year, because a lot of it pertains to the PET, so it will be very helpful for next year, but for all you DBE learners, who are busy with your pets currently, obviously it is great information for you. So we're looking at how do we actually go about finding information. And again, like I say, for those doing the pet, this is a very timely module. So we look at the introduction first, right? What is the task? What have we been asked to do? From there, what data or information is needed? Once we find that out, then where are we going to get that data and information? We are going to be checking, like we do the whole fact-checking thing. Yes, we're going to be checking that data and information. We're then going to process that data and information. And finally, we'll be drawing conclusions from everything we've now found and processed and checked and then report on that. And there they tell us the better you understand the task and identify what you need to solve the problem, the easier your task will be. So getting a good understanding around that is important. Again, especially for the pets. So in that you have to formulate a task definition. And this is you defining the task. So what have you been asked to do? And again, if you don't fully understand it, um, you're going to end up with a solution that doesn't match. Right? So you need to know that. Then we are going to determine what type of data is needed. And to do that, we ask two types of questions. The first is your closed question, where you answer with facts. It's like what, where, when, who. And then your open-ended question um, requires a bit more. Like why are you doing this? Why have you chosen this particular subject? How are you going to be gathering information? Um, what if this happens or something else? There are also different levels to help you shape the best solution because uh, here, for example, with your closed question, you get your lower level questions, which are facts only. Um, your open-ended is a higher level question because there's a bit more judgment that is needed with that. Again, for those doing the PAT, this is important because you have to structure those questions um, in relation to the different levels as well. Okay. Then they give us some general tips. We were looking at, um, you know, setting questions. So we want to talk to people with first-hand experience. We want to try and imagine ourselves in the situation. We don't assume anything. We can brainstorm ideas with friends or family, or whatever it is. Uh, reflect on your questions. Is the question helpful for the task in hand? And then you don't want to confuse key questions with survey-type questions. Okay. So, based on that, we are quickly looking at surveys for collecting data. I mean, maybe you, again, depending on the topic that you've chosen, you need to get information from certain types of people, whether it's doctors, industry, folks, whatever the case is. Um, so, we use surveys that we can send out via email, surveys that are written out, others that are like Google Forms, those are also surveys as well. Now, the benefits is the fact that we can do this quickly and easily. We can generalize the findings if the sample group is representative. Um, data from surveys can be captured and analyzed easily. And I want to just add this. I want to just add this. Not, not the text in red, but this for the grade 11 who are listening here. These questions, even if you're not doing the PET now, so for IB grade 11 learners specifically, even though you are not doing a pet at this point in time, these questions come up anyway. So some of them will come up asking about, you know, what's the difference between an open and a closed-ended question? What is the benefit yeah, in front of you of a survey? Um, maybe the benefit of going with a Google form as to, or as opposed to somebody actually, um, you know, physically going out and getting those answers. Okay. Speaking of which, here we go. There are different ways of conducting these surveys, right? You can visit people at 
the homes, you can approach people on the street, you can phone, you can do electronic questionnaires, web-based forms, all these types of things. Know the difference um, and know what the benefits are. And yeah, you just have to think logically as well. Here are a few um, typical questions that you find in your survey. There's one for circle the answer, place a cross over your choice, um, write on a scale of one to four how often you exercise. <laughs> Okay, gonna skip that one. Um, indicate your age group with a cross. Oh, again, I'm not going to fill that one in. <laughs> right, so the types of survey questions. Then we talk about how to set the questions for a questionnaire. You avoid irrelevant questions. Now, if you don't need to know the person's name or age or things like that, then you don't put it in the questionnaire. Don't use very technical terms. Why? You might know what it is, but the person who is filling that in might have no idea what you're talking about. Avoid double questions where you're asking the same thing more than once. Provide an other option if necessary. Avoid asking questions in the negative. And avoid using vague terms like sometimes. And obviously you can test it on a friend of yours to find out um, you know, what the question is really like. And hopefully your friend will actually be honest with you and tell you whether... Your question is good or whether it needs a bit of work All right then they go on to the effective layout of a questionnaire how should your questionnaire be laid out and they give us a number of points regarding um, that as well as to how it should be laid out and then we go into checking the actual quality of the information and there they just mentioned to us and this is something that comes up again in the pet where you need to check the authority, objectivity, and affiliation um, of the information that you find. We want to make sure the information and the data that we are collecting is accurate, right? We want to make sure it is, it is accurate that what you are getting um, is not just something that somebody made up and just popped online. No. You want to make sure it is current. It is up to date. You want to make sure it actually covers the particular um, question that you are dealing with. So it answers that question fully, right? <clears throat> Who is the information for? Who's your target audience? So is that information of the right kind for the particular target audience? And then a question that always comes up is regarding website layout and design. You need to look at things like readability. Consistency of design, ease of navigation, speed of loading, all of these different aspects when it comes to um, the layout and use of websites. And folks, that is it for module 7.1 of your grade 11 CAT curriculum.